Okay, here we go. Egyptian gods, oracle cards. Sylvana Alasia, edited by Los Carabio. Booklet is in all of these languages. No French? I was disappointed. <laughs> uh, the box is totally awesome. You have this um, shiny black and the matte black. And then, of course, you have gold. And gold was supposed to be the flesh of the gods. So very important to the Egyptians. So that's why any good Egyptian deck should have some gold on it. And I liked her um, Egyptian tarot, which I reviewed uh, some time ago. And it did speak to me, this Egyptian tarot did speak to me. It was edited again by um, uh, Los Carroyo. And it has a very similar format in terms of the papyrus feel on the back of the car uh, on the cards. So they might be a good pair for doing combined reading better than using the Nefertari Tarot, although the Nefertari Tarot is so shiny, it's beautiful. <laughs> I don't think the Nefertari Tarot is hers. It's Los Carabeo, but I don't think it's hers. But this one is definitely um, Silvana Alasia. Okay. So this got released, I think, 25th of March, maybe? Uh, although Amazon seems to think it's 25th of April. I got it on Book Depository, which is owned by Amazon, so it's weird that you have discrepancy. Box is fairly plain. It's a smallish box, and that's fine. You know, it contains the cards, contains the book. The book is nice and, uh, you know, it's okay. It's not a color printed book, but then, you know, this is fitting pound deck, so it's not super expensive. You have three different spreads to play with, and I actually like the, the spreads that they propose. But I will not get into the book too much. In the back of the cards, you can see the cardstock's shiny. Cards are nice, beautiful stock. And they are a slightly odd shape for um, an oracle deck. But at the same time, uh, for me, it's better because they're not as long as usual. So I can handle them better. And now I've totally messed them up. Right. <laughs> okay. Let's try to do this. All right. Here we go. So, starts with Ra, as you would, <laughs> and so you have a very small border, which, yay for a very small border, Ra, the name of the deity, and a keyword, so not a ton of keywords, but a keyword, and loads to engage with on here, okay? So don't just read the book, go with what you know. Go with your experience of the Netar. Amun Ra. And I think I was gonna say they're no they're they're not. <laughs> they're not in alphabetical order. So this one is Shu. And Shu is often represented with a feather, just like Matt's feather. It's actually the air. And you can see, you know, there's a little fan here. Fun action going on. Nut. So Nut is the lady. She is the night sky, basically. Now, I do like this deck. I think I love the traditional depictions. Um, I like the way that she's put the keywords. The keywords really mostly speak to me. Um, Osiris is like one of the best Osiris that, I've, that I own in an oracle deck. Isis is very beautiful, very evocative. And you can feel 
the Easter feeling in there, you know, with all that greenery coming up and her just bringing up, you know, working her magic to really make all of this come out the ground and get renewed. Set. I'll have a little talk on set at some point, Seth and Horace, um, but I think I'm going to do some form of cycle of Egyptian deities at some point. Horus sitting on the throne. Oh, my favorite, Nephthys, who is a sister of Isis. And Anubis for transformation. Okay, I get it. Yeah. It may be one of the least convincing ones. Thoth for wholeness. As you know, Thoth is a, the god who is recording everything that happens in Akash, in the Akash. Matt. Hathor. And Hathor, I mean, even though it says intelligence, you can see the protection, you can see the life, you can see the scepter here, you can see the arrows. So, you know, what do all of these combined give you? Pta. Love Pta. I think that the Pta uh, in the Oracle deck of Nikki Scully is beautiful because you can really get his creative thing with everything that comes out of his words, is that of his mouth is flourishing. But you get you get a similar feel here because he's got all these scepters, all these insignia of power in order to create. And the hieroglyph really pops as well on this card. Whereas on this card it's a lot more toned down. For Bastet or Bast. Now, Bast, you know, she's often represented with a sistrum, but for me, I really want to see a perfume urn. So I'm seeing it there in the hieroglyphs, thank you. And again, this is something that we'll need to uh, talk about at some point. Sekhmet, the lioness. And this was the clencher for me. Kepera or Kepri. I have only seen Kepri done this way in one other place. And it was in a book. And I think it must be taken from a mural. But I love, I love it. I just love it. This was a clencher. So it's so evocative. It's, it just speaks to me so much. Konsu who kind of looks a little bit like Ta, but has different attributes. You know, you can see the the moon above his head. And there's a, a link here as well. Knum, very well done. Very well done, very beautiful, love it. Anuket, who I really like to work with. Sobek. So Sobek and Horus get their own cards. They don't have to share a card. Toweret. And a little bit of sneaky Hathor there. Happy, God of the Nile. Uh, Neith. She has a shuttle and perseverance. I don't have issues with how she's interpreted the cards um, and I feel free enough because the imagery is traditional enough. I do feel free to just put over whatever I need to put over. Uh, this is a really good one actually, uh, not often depicted. Uh, I really like it. I've got a, a little mural of it that I might take a picture of at some point. Heka, who's always sorely missing. But we need Heka. Without Heka, we have nothing. <laughs> Amit. Super nice depiction. Sashet. 
So again, all of these would be working well with Norman D. Ellis's book. Uh, even though I don't think she covers deities like Mertziger or Mertziger, Silkith. Now you see this one, she has like a scorpion under her head. And I think you see her in uh, King Tutankhamun's tomb. Apophis. I'm not a great lover of having Apophis in the oracles. But hey, why not? If you don't feel like working with him, take him out. If you're asking for who is protecting me out of the Pantheon, uh, just maybe take him out, okay? Mahen. And my favorite, Nefertum, who has the Knot of Isis. So why the Knot of Isis is not an Isis card, I don't know. But I kind of like that it's with Nefertum at the same time. And Nefertum is the son of um, Sekhmet and Ptah. So if you think about what they represent, you know, then completeness is very good, actually. Very accurate, very, very spot on for Nefertum. So there's only 36 cards, not the usual 44. But I think you get enough bang for your buck, basically. Um, delightful deck, very light, very colorful, very Egyptian, totally oozing Egypt. <laughs> and so I would definitely recommend it if you like Egyptian decks. Uh, the book might leave you wanting. Okay. So maybe... And I'm not getting any anything for this, but maybe consider getting Normandy Ellis's book, okay? Just to supplement your studies and just supplement your understanding, okay? So I've just done a, a little three card draw doing using the existence method, and it says in the Egyptian gods oracle cards. And it says, this method is about your current existence. The present is the product of past actions. The future can still be created. It depends on the directions that you take. So I shuffled and then card one, which was here, represents the mind of the entire set of thoughts that often condition our action. And this was raw, enlightening, very solar, and I would say that is spot on. Very energetic. You have the ankh, you have the eyes, you have the sun. I mean, how much bigger can that sun get? <laughs> but I like that you've also got the water. Two, symbolizes the heart and the most spiritual sensations we perceive. And how appropriate Isis came out, faith and wisdom. And I thought, oh my goodness, okay, I need to share this with you guys. I wasn't expecting the cards to be quite so spot on on the first read. And card three is the human human instinctive part. Everything that we are capable of doing uh, in an unreasonable and impulsive manner. So for me, as you can see, it's transformation. Okay. And I might have to ponder that one. A little bit more because this could be obstacles so it could be like uh, seeking you know over seeking maybe unbalancing with haha <laughs> unbalancing maybe not <laughs> oh I need to d dwell into that a little bit more so this is just a sample these are the the three that came out using the existence method and as you can see it's not so much past present future but it's more like representing the mind and the entire set of thoughts that condition our actions. The heart, so thoughts, heart, and instinct. So thoughts and mind, heart and spirit, and instinct, and... Mm, all the parts of you, all the parts that are maybe unseen and unacknowledged. Okay, so 
What do you think? I think for me, this is actually spot on. I can't believe that Isis came out in the middle there, in the heart and the spirituality card. I mean, make of it what you will, but I thought it was a very good example and I'm totally chuffed and I'm going to be working with this deck for uh, the next wee while anyway. <laughs> okay, I'll keep you posted. Hope you enjoyed this. Let us know how you feel about it. Do you like the art? Do you engage with it? Do you like Egyptian decks? Or have you had just about enough of Egyptian decks? Okay, let us know and I will see you soon.